Welcome back. We're live at NAB 2023. We're here at the Sony booth with Andy. Andy's going to go over some of the new products that Sony's got for this year. Absolutely. So, Andy, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great, TK. Excellent, Thanks excellent. Thanks for stopping by the booth. Yeah, nice always. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see everybody. Uh, we're showing a lot of things here at our pro audio area this year, including our wireless microphones, the UWPD family, the DWX, you know, high-end digital system. But we just came off the NAMM show in Anaheim just a few days ago, and we made a couple of... Uh, you know, product announcements there that you know may not be so totally focused on location sound, but they're very important audio uh, pieces of gear. Uh, one of them, and this is a microphone that we actually introduced back at the New York AES show, but we made a big hit with it at the NAMM show. I basically had our iconic C800 G2 microphone mm -hmm. uh, set up on a lovely boom stand, going through a really nice Allen and Heath SQ5 mixer for quality. And then right next to it, or a couple of feet away, was our, its new little brother, the C80 microphone. And the point was, is a C800G is, you know, $11,700, and, you know, a couple of years back ordered, and we can't make enough of them, and it's so, you know, kind of sought after. But it has a, a specific sound quality that people love, a very vocal forward voicing that makes your vocal sit out on, in the front of a mix without having to wrestle with it. But we showed its new little brother, the C80, and people honestly could barely tell the difference between the C80 and the C800G, and their, their mouths kind of dropped, especially when I mentioned the price point of the C80, which is $499. They go, are you kidding me? Yes, you can buy 20 of these for the price of a yeah. C800G. But here at the show, even though a microphone like the, the C80 has a lot of different applications and vocals and acoustic recording and things like that. Here we're at Broadcast World, so I'm showing it in a simple little podcast setup because, you know, for me, listening to podcasts, I would like the voice of the, uh, you know, the talent to sound as real as possible. And to me, having a condenser microphone adds that, 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 that sound of realism that maybe just a dynamic microphone doesn't. So that's what we're really showing here. But a lovely microphone, been shipping for a few months, worth checking out the C80. Um, we had a, uh, a YouTube reviewer say, you know, the C80 is a little brother to the C800G, and he was a big brother. He said, you know, little brothers are usually um, kind of can do everything you can do as the older brother, but some things they can do better. And he goes, Rrr. so anyway, <laughs> I, I like that little story. Yeah, so that's no. one of the things. The other thing that we were showing that is very new at the NAMM show, and we just introduced, is a brand new pair of Sony headphones. You know, we are so well known for the MDR7506 headphones. It's been around for so long. One of the obvious things people like about it is its uh, level of comfort, you know? They, you just put them on and they feel like a, a well-worn pair of jeans and you're not constantly going, oh, I'm wearing headphones, they're just great. So this is an MDR MV1. It's an open back design and it's open back for a very specific reason. You know, the kind of world in music and, and starting to happen in broadcast and things like that is all about immersive and spatial mixing. And the idea here is that everybody doesn't necessarily have the luxury of mixing in a studio that is set up for uh, either Sony 360 Reality Audio or Dolby Atmos or whatever. So um, we have the ability to mix now in immersive kind of capable headphones. But because it's an open back design, if you consider that a closed design allows sound to bounce around inside of the structure, it kind of um, uh, loses a little bit of the directionality or the, you know, the, the, the true sense of that sound. But an open back design is very accurate. But one of the challenges in an open back headphone is that low frequency and every, every sound kind of comes out both sides so it can leak and you can lose some, some energy out of especially the low frequencies. The MDR MV1s go from five hertz out to 80K. And there's a challenge in itself because to come up with a diaphragm structure that can be stiff enough to do 80K, but still has to be plia pliable enough to do down to five hertz is a real challenge. So our engineers went back and forth with lots of different diaphragm designs, ended up with a curved corrugated design, but the low frequency can't be mushy. It, can't, it has to be pliable, but it's got to be tight base. So they came up with what we refer to as a tri-duct structure. 
So this is all just to say that these are really lovely sounding headphones. But honestly, what would a pair of Sony headphones be if they weren't comfortable? So our engineers spent a lot of time coming up with a headphone that was um, very lightweight. It's actually uh, you know aluminum on the side, very lightweight. The the pads are nice and squishy and suede like and all that kind of stuff. I mean, this and, is um, fantastic. The it's really here. Yeah. I feel them. They're no, very. I, they, I love them. The yeah. plush. The of plush. The, the pads. Exactly. The t ability to turn. Exactly. Like that's Go save flat. A lot of people. Now the other thing that's important is we live in a professional world and they get used a lot and cables can get stepped on and cranked. So this has the ability to have a remotable and removable and replaceable if necessary screw in cable. But the other thing that's nice is the other end is a nicely machined aluminum quarter inch connector. And so, you know, our engineers kind of went to great lengths to make all of this very, very professional. It also comes with a little quarter to eighth inch adapter, and that's nice. So they are exceptionally comfortable, and um, uh, I think that's a lot to say about it. So other options for the cable would be um, eighth inch to eighth inch as well? I quarter assume. inch to eighth inch adapter. These can also go balanced. I'm actually showing uh, a very high-end Sony Walkman digital player that even does 11.2 DSD, and it's got both a regular eighth inch and, and a balanced connector, which is, I think, 4.4 millimeters. But, you know, listening with that into these headphones is, is just a whole nother level of, of playback experience. Very, very nice. Right, so these guys reality. are available, oh, they just hit our warehouse, I believe, and these are $3.99, so check them out. I think they're really, really lovely sounding. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to absolutely. getting a pair of those in, sure. in my own studio. Um, so next, will you take us over to uh, our the plug-on, please? Yeah, we have our family of digital wireless, our high-end digital wireless, that so we've had out for a number of years, DWX. But we've uh, been migrating the transmitters over the last several years to be full spectrum. And you know to get away from blocks, obviously, yeah, post-FCC spectrum auction. So one of the most recent uh, updates is the new plug-on. It's called the uh, DWT P30. And that goes uh, all the way from you know, 417 out to 6, uh, 616 as well. Okay. So Double that's a, a nice powered? thing. Excuse me? Double A powered? Double A power, yep, double A power, and uh, does, you know, obviously, phantom power for shotguns and all that kind of stuff. It's remote controllable via Zigbee from our receivers, from our cameras, so on and so forth. Okay, So nice. that's the idea. Let's take a look at that uh, the two-channel rack receiver. Sure, come on down. So I think one of the things that we may not have focused on so much uh, in past, because we were obviously talking location sound and we wanted to be able to you know, say that our, our slot receivers are now super slot and unit slot size and all that, but we kind of you know, glossed over perhaps our rack receiver because here in the news business, news sets, it's very important to us. So we have our rack system, which is a, a two-channel rack system, a DWR R03D. Two independent channels, obviously double tuner diversity on both of them, full remote controllability via Zigbee of paired transmitters, uh, uh, double Dante uh, controllability. Here we are interfacing it with our wireless studio software, which does all the scanning and channel planning for you and, and you know monitoring. Um, one of the things that we have here in this system, which is a great workflow benefit, especially for news sets, is a, uh, a little um, charging bay, and that is powered either on a local wall or also PoE. But you know, after a news show, you just pull off the body pack, and you literally plug it right in, and it'll start charging. But the idea is, say you have multiple transmitters mm -hmm. and multiple of these bays, you can um, assign each of these little dual charging bays a unique IP address. And so when you come up on the Wireless Studio software, you can then um, have in, in, in kind of what's called the battery charger viewer, you can see the charge status of any of the transmitters that are hooked up. So say you got a whole bunch of these things and you see one's ready to go at 100%, but you're not sure which one it is. So all you do is you hit the blink button and through the IP address it comes out and then that one will flash at you. 
so you know which one is ready to go and to put back in for the new news or the four o'clock news or whatever. So it's a workflow thing that uh, we think is easy. Instead of having to maybe pull batteries out and put them in a separate charging bay, just take the whole thing, plunk it in there. You can also charge individual batteries. Very nice. So this is a great solution for uh, an installation where you just want to quickly deploy and rotate in and out and transmitters, you can charge them in that exactly, base. Exactly, exactly. Lovely. Good, and we have active antennas, and we have all those things, and long cable runs, and you know. Um, and this is a uh, web server base? Excuse me? Web server base? No, this isn't web server base at this point, no. Okay. No, 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 no. So this is all you know, local kind of network, but in a station you can have up to, I think, six PCs all running in separate control rooms. You can have up to, uh, here is our Zigbee antenna, transmitter, Very so this nice. uh, is also IP addressable and you can have up to 15 of these, and these can be deployed in multiple uh, studios, hallways, mm -hmm. you know, the weather area, you the kitchen, different zones, whatever you want, and yeah. wherever, whenever a transmitter is within range of these, you can remote control all the functions on that transmitter as well. Very nice, and then everything so reflects here. Everything in, reflects in your, here, yeah. and you can monitor it, you can do, you know, uh, error logging and chart graphing, and. There's lots going on. It's Very a pretty nice. deep, deep situation. And Dante, Dante enabled. Yes, Dante enabled, absolutely. Excellent. And I think that pretty well covers us. You know, we've got the full UWPD family, but I think that gives you guys a good update. Quick, quick DSLR. Uh, yeah, sure, come on down. Okay, so what we're showing here is, you know, we've got our family of cameras that go from the FX30, FX3, uh, FX6, FX9, Z280s, all of our alpha mirrorless cameras, they all have what's called Sony's um, you know, MI, or multi-interface intelligent shoe. And in that case, you can add to either our dual receiver or our mono receiver this little hot shoe accessory, and it, it goes right into the ca a camera's shoe, and then audio goes right down through the shoe into the camera, and you could, don't even need to have batteries in here, and you can then just pop the batteries out, put it in here and the receiver will derive its power off of the camera's power. But what's really special about, especially the latest generation of our cameras, is on this multi-interface shoe, there's a little tiny switch, analog or digital. And, and flipping it to digital means that when the camera is capable of doing it, as all of these are, you can bypass this receiver's D to A converter and go right and bypass the camera's subsequent A to D converter and go directly digitally right into the video file. And that's also, you know, even improves things more. The last thing to mention about UWPD that is nice is this receiver does what's called sequential pairing and all band scan. So no matter what city you're in, you don't have to go do a, a, a multiple scans in each little frequency range. You can say just do the entire range, in this case from UHF 14 to 25, for example, it'll go through and in sequential pairing, uh, that means it will find you, in one scan, it'll find you the two best frequencies available and, and put them both up. And then we have NFC pairing, which means that once it flashes and, and, and you've selected the frequency, you just touch the transmitter and the receiver together, they vibrate, they find out the frequency, and then you, it says, give me your second transmitter, you pick it up, you hold it, it vibrates, and you get to work. So it's a very fast way of scanning and manipulating. And not to, not to forget the one last thing, is these make great kind of, kind of personal monitoring devices because they have headphone jacks and you can put on, uh, this is true double tuner diversity and uh, you know, can be coordinated with all of the talent mics and frequencies and then you can have multiples of these for you know, personal monitoring, for boom up, for whatever, all those kind of things. Headphone jack. And the idea here is, say you got 10 of these things that all need to be on the frequency of the transmitter half, uh, hanging off of your card or your mixer bag, for example. You can use that NFC pairing in the opposite direction. You can tell your receiver, to learn to its frequency from one transmitter. Very pick up nice. a receiver, go pick up another one, pick up another one, and they're all set to the right frequency and ready to go. And you got volume control on your belt, bop, 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 you get it. That, yeah, that's what I was, uh, there's a quick uh, control for volume on here as well? There is, because um. there's what's called monitor mode, and when you put it in monitor mode, the plus and minus button, excellent. you just reach down and your buttons go, and that's your volume control. Okay, most excellent, yeah. Here that's, we uh, go. That's pivotal. Well, Andy, we appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you so you, much. Thank you, Really appreciate it. Catch you soon.